I wrote a book called The Mobility Revolution. I think it was the very first time that that term was actually used, and I said that there are three fundamental trends impacting not just automotive, but a number of other industries as well. This was in 2014, and those trends are zero emissions, zero accidents, and zero ownership. We're at this cusp of a mobility revolution, which is going to separate the pleasure of driving from the need to drive. Our urban infrastructure is not growing, but our urban population is. This is Paris on a normal day. This is Paris on a car-free day. Pedestrianization is taking hold in the cities. If you've been to New York, maybe if you live in New York, this is what you might have seen some years ago. This is what you see today on Broadway. Refocusing the infrastructure to support quality of life and refocusing the infrastructure in such a way that you need to think about, well, actually, how do we get in and out of these cities, right? At some point, Uber and Lyft and others will go to you as manufacturers and suppliers and say, this is how I want the car to look like. They are going to define the car, not the end customer, but Uber. It will happen that mobility service providers become the primary point of contact, while manufacturers provide vehicles in a bespoke and custom way for the provision of mobility. I'm much, much more bullish than every other statistic that you see because I feel that in developed and industrialized nations, we will have uh, close to 100% electrified vehicles by 2025. That includes 48 volt, that includes hybrids, plug-in hybrids, and the like. The value chain that we have known, development, production, marketing, sales, dealership, da 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 is history. The value chain of mobility looks very different. It will still have first-tier supply, but you know, we have software developers in parallel. We still have original equipment manufacturers. We have still somebody who's printing cars. But we will have mobility operators. And we will have meta apps. And with that, I mean those apps on the phone that will let you get from here to London to Amsterdam. If you don't own a car, you don't care about those brands anymore because your point of attention, your point of passion is how do I get from A to B? And that A to B is actually now by whatever your favorite app is on your phone. When I take out my smartphone, I have about 30 different mobility apps. A little frustrating at, at times, but it gets me from A to B. That's why I say it's the end of default car. I'm not saying it's the end of the car, I'm saying it's the end of the car as the default mode of transportation and that we look to alternatives and that we have greater transparency of alternatives. We have full transparency. There are business models arising out of this uh, that give you a flat rate, a flat rate for mobility. So where, whereas today maybe you spend $500 a, a month on insurance, tax, fuel, maintenance, your leasing rate, parking tickets, speeding tickets. There are business models that will give you a flat rate. Same $500, but you're going to get public transport, car sharing, ride sharing, bike sharing, ride hailing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Changing the default from the car to mobility. Docking, connectable, fully autonomous, Obviously electric, because it makes no sense to develop anything else these days. But notice what has disappeared out of this picture anyway. The car. So we'll have space for auto shuttles and bikes and scooters and robots and all kinds of different things. Pedestrians, anyway. But the car will have been banished. Now, is that going to happen in every city? No, of course not. We have trends that are defining our industry that are irrefutable. So my plea to you is do not underestimate the incredible speed with which the mobility revolution is taking place and the massive 
impact that it will have, every business model is transient, is ripe for disruption.